Lionel Messi has had an amazing career, a World Cup, a Copa America, a Champions League, and a luscious beard. But what if that career started today? We went back and grabbed Lionel Messi's actual attribute page when he was 16 in the Football Manager Series and put it on Barcelona at the start of this season. And we simulated it forward until he retired at the age of 39. He plays 23 years. At least Football Manager got that right. But Lionel Messi is 16 years old again. And the issue is he's actually not very good. But his potential, his potential is really high. Don't look at his attributes now. He'll get good. He'll get there. But in the first season, because his attributes were so low at the age of 16, Lionel Messi wasn't playing. And as a result, he started to get upset. Lionel Messi at Barcelona is in danger. He's asking for his initially agreed playing time. He's not playing up to the standard that he believes he should be. And he's transfer listed by Barcelona for just $90,000. Now that might just be the single greatest bargain in human history. Lionel Messi is on the market for $90,000 because he hasn't been able to crack the first team. Probably because he's stuck behind another very talented 16 year old with much higher attributes for his age, Lamine Yamal. Lamine Yamal's made 16 first team appearances with three goals and an assist this year, and he's the same age as Lionel Messi at the same position. Year two, Barcelona has managed to save themselves. They've renegotiated a new contract with Lionel Messi. He is no longer upset, but he's also, he's not played a game yet. Not even for the Barcelona second team. His attributes are getting better, but he's wilting away. You're wondering, Zealand. Did this take a really long time to simulate? Yes, the answer would be yes. This took a really long time to simulate. You want me to do it again? Subscribe. Year three, Lionel Messi has still not made an appearance for Barcelona or the Barcelona B team, which he has now at least been moved to because it's popping up in his career stats. This is clearly becoming a concern in Barcelona's hierarchy because Lionel Messi is now 18 years old and he still has that amazing Messi potential. So they have decided to loan him out to Melbourne City. Lionel Messi has been loaned to the A-League in Australia, where he will likely, I would assume, begin to make his first team appearances. I mean, he's getting better here, but he is still upset he's not getting into the first team, and he is once again on the transfer list at Barcelona for $90,000. Somebody has to take them up on that. And it was at Melbourne City, in something called the Asian Confederation Cup, that Lionel Messi would score his first senior goal, leading off what was a 4-0 win over Kuala Lumpur. Messi would go on to score seven goals with three assists in 26 appearances as an 18-year-old in the Australian League, helping inspire a tremendous championship run by Melbourne City. They won the A-League with Lionel Messi leading the way. While at Melbourne City, they also won the entire Asian Confederations Cup, which was the first senior trophy that Lionel Messi ever won. And upon his return to Barcelona, at the ripe old age of 19, Lionel Messi would finally start getting first team playing time for Barcelona. He would make 22 appearances and score one goal in his inaugural season as part of Barcelona's first team. Still way behind where Lamine Yamal was actually at, who'd been a regular starter for Barcelona now for four years years at this point, but Lionel Messi's catching up. I mean, the contrast in the attributes between the age of 16 and the attributes where they are now at the age of 20 at the end of his first season in Barcelona's first team is, is massive. He's on the right trajectory. Lamine Yamal also finished top in all of La Liga in rating, tied with Nico Williams at a 7.51. He won Spanish Young Player of the Season, and he won the next gen. So Lionel Messi had a lot of catching up to do and was still sitting squarely behind Barcelona's better wonder kid. But Messi had started to make some progress. He'd made his debut in the Argentina national team and was starting to become a prominent part of that. But 2028, the fifth season of Lionel Messi being in the database is when the breakout finally happened. Messi emerged as a star. 34 appearances in the league, 12 goals, 5 assists, and a 7.6 rating. And his performances did not go unnoticed. In his age 21 season, he was awarded the Spanish Young Player of the Year Award, stealing it from Lamine Yamal, who also made 30 appearances this season. But it wasn't just the Young Player of the Year Award. Lionel Messi was named Spanish League Player of the Year. He was the La Liga Player of the Season. Yeah, I'm a big believer it was that loan time he spent in Australia. I'm just saying. He'd signed a new contract paying him over 12 million a year, and now has 14 appearances and six goals for Argentina. But his inaugural effort in Copa America would come up short. So we're not shaking the Lionel Messi can't win an international trophy until he's in his 30s uh, hoodoo. That's not going away. They lost to Uruguay in the semifinal. And Messi didn't score in the entire tournament, so it's a little awkward. <laughs> But despite Messi's emergence, it was another league failure, finishing six points behind an absolutely rampant Real Madrid led by Vinicius. But wait, <laughs> do you hear that? Bah! I hear something. Bah, bah motherfucker! The goat is here.
Lionel Messi hit the next season and dropped an absolute masterclass to win Barcelona the title. 11 goals, 8 assists in 31 matches, a 7.7 match rating. And Barcelona had an unbeaten season with 22-year-old Lionel Messi leading the way alongside Lamine Yamal, who scored 18 goals to win the La Liga Golden Boot. The Wonder Kids, they're teaming up. I don't know what this is. After finishing second the year before, Lionel Messi would win the FIFA Best Under-21 Men's Player in his final year of eligibility, because he is now at the end of the season very much 22 years old. He is also very much a world-class player now, but compared to what he did in real life, a bit of a late bloomer. He would also once again win Spanish Young Player of the Season, and he also won Champions League Young Player of the Season, helping lead Barcelona to the quarterfinals. And these incredible performances were attracting interest, perhaps from clubs that were regretting that they didn't spend 90000 dollars to buy him a few years ago. He was wanted by Chelsea. To be fair, Chelsea doesn't want to buy players for $90,000. They want to buy them for $90 million. And Lionel Messi could be up. But instead of going to Chelsea, Lionel Messi would sign a new massive $25 million a year contract at Barcelona and keep balling out. He produced 16 goals, 7 assists, and a stupendous 7.99 average match rating in the following season. And all of that was completely necessary because Barcelona was involved in perhaps the most insane title chase ever. Barcelona and Real Madrid both finished over 100 points and Barcelona would finish a second consecutive season unbeaten in the league with 32 wins and 6 draws. But despite their league heroics, Barcelona would once again falter in the Champions League, losing in the quarterfinal to Milan after Messi scored to go up, and then it was Julian Alvarez that scored to send AC Milan through to the semifinal. That's some Argentina on Argentina violence there. For his incredible performances, Lionel Messi won his second La Liga Player of the Year award. And as a result, the big checkbooks were circling. Not around Messi, well, around Messi, PSG was interested, but also around Lamine Yamal, who had Man City and PSG interested at the end of this season. And the big clubs would claim their prize. It was Lamine Yamal. For $204 million, he transferred to Manchester City, and Lionel Messi's superstar, dual-wielding wonder kid running mate was now out of the picture. The summer got even worse for Lionel Messi when his Argentina side lost in the round of 16 against Portugal. This time, he did, however, produce not one, not two, but three major tournament goals with Argentina, so we're getting closer. But this was his first prime shot at the world's biggest title, and he missed. With Lamine all out of the picture, somehow Lionel Messi managed to outdo himself once again, averaging an eight- 0.02 rating in La Liga matches the following season. He scored 15 goals, had 8 assists, and 31 appearances. He also averaged a 7.77 in the Champions League. Absurd. But Barcelona was finally losing matches again without Lamina Ball and ended up finishing third. But there was a potential consolation prize. Real Madrid against Barcelona in the Champions League final. Lionel Messi's first shot at the greatest reward in the club game. And despite two injuries to Barcelona, including Gavi, Lionel Messi assisted the winning goal to George Elenikina to win the Champions League title. It was a massive year. After coming third the previous year, Lionel Messi would win the FIFA FIFA Pro Player of the Year. He was also named FIFA's Men's Player of the Year. That's the award that Lewandowski keeps winning because he can't win the Ballon d'Or. It was also a season in which Lionel Messi won his third La Liga Player of the Year title, but that Ballon d'Or was nowhere to be found. In fact, he wasn't even in the top three. It would be Kylian Mbappe's seventh Ballon d'Or instead. It's at this point that Messi perhaps realized he was facing the opposite of what he enjoyed in a previous life, where he was the favored player that won every Ballon d'Or, and now Kylian Mbappe was getting the same treatment even though Lionel Messi won essentially every other major award. And the FIFA Best Men's Player of the year, Kylian Mbappe wasn't even in the top three, but he's still winning the Ballon d'Or. Will Messi ever take down this Mbappe dominance? But the following season, allegedly in the prime of his career, he actually cooled off. A 7.78 rating in the league, 15 goals, 7 assists, no major trophies. But that was just because he hadn't gone through the summer yet, because it was a Copa America year in 2032. And after surviving a group stage loss to Colombia, they beat Canada and Uruguay in extra time to set up a dramatic final. Argentina 
against Brazil. And believe it or not, Lautaro Martinez scored the goal. Lionel Messi started. He dropped the 6.6. .6. He actually only scored one goal in the tournament, but he now had a major trophy with Argentina to his name. And at the age of 25, he was entering the prime of his career, locked in at Barcelona with a new $30 million a year contract. The following year was something of a return to form. Barcelona won La Liga again. This was Messi's first title without Lamine Yamal, his running partner. He dropped a 7.78 rating and won La Liga player of the season for the third time. Sorry, for a fourth time already at the age of 26. He'd worked his way up to being an icon at Barcelona, but Manchester City was once again circling. Seeking to reunite Messi and Lamine Yamal, the two players that had run roughshod through La Liga. But Messi would stay and produce his sixth consecutive season with a rating over a 7.7. He'd win a consecutive La Liga Player of the Year award for the second time, his fourth in the last five years. But Barcelona didn't win La Liga and once again struggled in the Champions League, losing on penalties to Newcastle. But perhaps the World Cup could change their fortunes. It was 2034 a chance to win a World Cup in his prime, and Lionel Messi did score his first World Cup goal against Angola in a 3-1 win. But it was just one goal, and in the quarterfinals, Argentina faced England and lost. It lost in a penalty shootout, and Lionel Messi missed. He also had a 6.6 .6 in the overall match itself, leaving Argentina World Cupless again. The Ballon d'Or also continued to elude Lionel Messi. Kylian Mbappe added an eighth to his stash before the reign of Bakayo Saka began, with Lionel Messi finishing third in voting for the Ballon d'Or in 2033 and 2034. This meant 32-year-old Bakayo Saka now had five Ballon d'Ors. Mbappe had eight, and 26-year-old Lionel Messi still has zero. Messi continued to stay fit and produce impressive seasons, a 7.77 rating and a 7.75 rating in the next two seasons, but no league titles and no Champions Leagues were to be found. He won the Liga's Player of the Year award again in 2036, and his incredibly consistent production finally moved him up in the Ballon d'Or rankings to second, losing out on the 2035 Ballon d'Or to a young player named Juan Ravello, a new gym, a generated player who was also at Barcelona, who Lionel Messi scored more goals than and had more assists than, but he played four more matches, so his rating was 0.01 lower. It's brutal, man. Give my boy Messi a Ballon d'Or, please. Three consecutive years in the top three in voting, and he loses to a new gen playing on the opposite way. To be fair, this guy is very good. He is also 5'4", somehow better and shorter than Lionel Messi. But Lionel Messi was now 28 years old. Manchester City was circling as always, but he was set into a life at Barcelona. 85 caps, 39 goals for Argentina, and a Copa America to look forward to in the summer. This is no longer the young wonder kid we were once tracking at Melbourne City. And that Copa America would be another Argentina success. Canada in the quarterfinal, again, somehow. Mexico in the semifinal, and Colombia in the final. A Colombia team that had beaten Brazil in the quarterfinal, by the way. And it was in that final that Lionel Messi actually dropped an 8.0, scoring in the 54th minute to open the score sheet and give Argentina its second Copa America in as many tries. Despite just his one goal, Messi was named Copa America Player of the Tournament because he also had three assists and averaged a 7.7. .7. But for Lionel Messi, this was the end of what I would call the good period. You see, Real Madrid kept winning La Liga. Messi still only had one league title without Lamine Yamal working next to him. I mean, he continued to produce amazing seasons, 16 goals, 7 assists in 30 league matches, 7 goals in 14 matches in the Champions League, but they weren't Messi seasons. He couldn't quite carry the team. And since that 2031 success in the Champions League, Barcelona hadn't even been back to the final. And in the 2038 season, Lionel Messi's role started to scale back. For the first time since 2029, he dropped an average rating in the league below 7.7. .7. And that scaled back role actually worked because Barcelona managed to win the league for the first time in five years by a single solitary point. And the team was led in rating by, you guessed it, Juan Ravello. I'm being a little harsh on Messi here. He was literally third in the entire league in average rating, but Ravello was first. And despite the fact that in 2037, Lionel Messi had snuck back to third on the Ballon d'Or list, it was Juan Ravello's incredible performance that won him a second Ballon Door. And to add insult to injury, that 2037 Ballon d'Or vote had Lionel Messi behind Lamine Yamal, 
as well. And Lionel Messi wasn't just starting to take the back seat at club level, it was also happening at Argentina. The World Cup was in the summer of 2038, and Messi was on the team. And he actually scored two goals in the group stage, but then a superstar emerged on Argentina's run. In the round of 16, a winning 87th minute goal over Ivory Coast by Luciano Villar. Villar scored again against South Korea in the quarterfinal to win, and then in the semifinal, he scored a brace to beat Morocco and go to the World Cup final. The explosive 29-year-old was a new gin playing for Liverpool at the time. And in the World Cup final, Lionel Messi did start, but he only dropped a 6.4. And in extra time, it was England that won. For the second consecutive World Cup, Argentina was eliminated by England, this time to hand England its first World Cup in this save. Messi also picked up an injury during the match, his last shot at a World Cup while in his prime. But Messi wasn't quite ready to ride off into the sunset yet. In 2040 and 2041, he produced very well-rounded seasons with at least a 7.6 rating. And then randomly, amazingly, in 2042, at the age of 34, Lionel Messi dropped another masterclass season. In the league, he had 12 goals, 10 assists, and a 7.82 rating at 34. The performance would earn him his seventh La Liga Player of the Season award and bring him to 200 career goals for Barcelona at 486 appearances. The problem for Barcelona is despite the fact it put up 93 points in this particular season, Atletico Madrid had now taken over the league, winning three of the last four titles with Real Madrid mixed in. And Barcelona had still not made a Champions League final since Messi's only win back in 2031. Champions League was now run by Newcastle in Manchester City, who would contest the 2042 final. Also, I know you were curious, Juan Ravello had the second highest average rating in 2042. He was not letting Lionel Messi have anything easy. And despite his resurgent performance, Messi's days of chasing the Ballon d'Or, that lifetime achievement award, it wouldn't come. Sergio, a new gen Mexican star at Atletico Madrid, had won the last two with Juan Ravello as the runner up. But Lionel Messi would never win the Ballon d'Or. He'd play four more years at Barcelona with his ability clearly waning down to a 7.16 average rating in his final season. In 2044, he'd win his last trophy with Barcelona, a Copa del Rey, of which he has a very large collection. The World Cup would elude him. In 2042, Argentina went out in a group stage spectacularly behind Cameroon and Bosnia and Herzegovina. And he would also never become a Barcelona legend. Playing at the club until 39 years of age, he stayed on the icon level with players like Andres Iniesta and Carlos Puyol. It's kind of crazy they're on that level, but Gavi, Pedri, Xavi, Pep Guardiola, Luis Enrique would all look down on Lionel Messi from their legend status. But he made over 600 appearances, scored 229 goals, and he also wasn't finished. Instead of going to the US, he signed an end-of-contract deal to go play at PSV Eindhoven, but he would make just six appearances, his legs completely gone at the age of 40. The final tally, one Champions League, two Copa Americas, five La Liga titles, seven La Liga Player of the Year awards, but he never won a Ballon d'Or and he never won a World Cup. What he did prove is that no matter what the alternate universe is, Lionel Messi will spend his entire career at Barcelona. And as good as he was in this alternate universe, Lionel Messi, if he started today, he came up short. I blame the one year in Australia. It was the one year in Australia. If you want to keep watching videos, I made one where I put Lionel Messi in every country in the entire world. It's, it's right there. I already made it appear magically. If you enjoyed this video, please do subscribe. And I demand that you have an excellent day. You must.